Hello everyone and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48th World where we do Bible scripture reading. We dialogue about it. Please come on in. Listen to what I'm reading because I'm reading strictly from the Bible. Putting my little uh, perspective in what I feel about passages while uh, within a book we're studying on. Uh, you know, I get my concept in there and see if ours mesh uh, well with one another. And that's what basically um, daily Bible reading scripture is all about. Trying to get your own discernment from the message uh, that is being presented to you in the Holy Bible. So make sure you read, study, and gather enough, uh, enough information when you're reading the Bible. Pray for the Lord for wisdom. This is another word of saying discernment with whatever book you're studying in the Bible by yourself or you're following along with me on my YouTube channel. And the um, chapter and verses we're um, dialoguing or speaking in about, okay? But we're going to be um, reading from Genesis chapter 17, 18, and 19 um, tonight. Uh, hope y'all been keeping up with the previous chapters I've been getting. Or well, y'all surpassed me and y'all moving on to, you know, another book in the Bible. That's great. You don't always have to wait on me to publish something. Uh, you can definitely dive in it, learn at your leisure, and uh, find more love and appreciation for the Bible and how we treat one another. Okay, but we're going to get right on into it now. We're in um, Genesis 17 where there's a covenant of circumcision made with Abram uh, and the Lord, okay, about what um, each son supposed to have done to them by the eighth day of birth or on the eighth day of their birth, okay? Um, chapter 17 reads, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will never be the father of, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. Okay? For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants. After you. Oh, excuse me. After you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien, I will give an everlasting possession to you and your descendants. After you and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep your covenant, you and your descendants, after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you. The covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you for the generations to come. Every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or brought with money from a foreigner. Those who are not your offspring, whether born in your household or brought or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, As for Sari, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sari. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. King of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down, laughed, and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael 
might live under your blessing. Then God said, yes, but your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless you. I will make you fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you. By this time next year, when he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household or, or bought with his money, every male in his household, and circumcised him. God told him, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that same day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or brought from a foreigner, was circumcised with him. Okay, since he's making a new covenant, this is my perspective. He he had a covenant with Noah, as we know. Um, then he had a covenant with Abram, which he renamed him to be called Abraham, because he's going to be the father of many. Uh, the birthplace of Abraham was in Ur, which is you are, or the Shandonians, moved to Canaan. His occupation was wealthy livestock owner. He's best known for hearing the call of an unknown God following in faith because the father of the Jewish people, or he's becoming the father of the Jewish people, and he's hearing and accepting God's covenant. Okay, so that's a little bit of history on uh, Abraham and how he came, became from Abram to Abraham and seemed like um, he was no, well, I wouldn't say nobody, but he was like in a single uh, phase of just being responsible for his family and his, um, I guess, people that was his, um, I wouldn't say really slaves, but they cared for him and his wife and um, everything for us with the livestock and addressing their needs. Uh, so it's like he was a mini king, but not necessarily a king king. And then when he got rebirthed over and got into a covenant with the Lord, the Lord changed his name because he was going to become a mighty person who was going to be um, making descendants from his line to great kings, great warriors. Um, and he was definitely known the father of many. Okay. But we're going to be thinking in a royal setting because his lineage that the father of heaven is giving him is going to be so great, so powerful. And they're going to be protected. But like I said, he didn't um, make his, uh, what do you call it, his pledge with um, Abraham per se. It was going to be his descendants, such as his um, first son he's going to be having at the age of 100. Uh, he's going to impregnate his wife, Sarah. You know why he's 99, but when the baby's born, um, he's going to be 100 years old. So that's interesting, very, very interesting, because the people in our lifetime, we see that are uh, in their late 80s, 90s, and 100, you know, some of them, or the, I should say the majority of them in society, they can barely move, they barely have their memory, if at all, you know, they may have, memory has been um, transluted to not really understanding anything or who they are, meaning with dementia and memory loss and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and everything else that come up out the blue uh, on us. Um, so basically that's amazing how miracle and amazing how the Lord let us live to be like 900 years, something, almost a thousand years old, and they were still having babies. You know, and doing things, walking around here like it wasn't nothing. And in our feeble attempt to still be a part of society as human beings, we can't even get past um, literally 20 um, years of age, 50, 40, uh, shoot, really coming out of elementary or high school. So our lives are really uh, decreased by comparison to what 
they had back then. All right, that was just my uh, feeling and my perspective. We're going to move on to three, visit uh, three visitors that came to see Abraham. All right, uh, chapter 18, the three visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he, said, when he saw them, he heard from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bow low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sheaves of fine flour and knead it and make some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before men. While they ate, he stood near them on their tree. Where's your wife, Sarah? They asked. They're in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, just like a female, right? We always are so curious of what's going on, and we don't know the tea, as it said in our uh, time. But we don't need we don't have the information, so we get we need to get to it. Nosy bodies, okay? That's what we are as women. Alrighty. Um which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing, which is again a sidebar I'm having with you all. Uh, child rearing days are pretty much over. And I would stance unless you do some scientific manipulating with your body and, you know, going to eat, uh, these doctors who uh, intravenous fertilize women or um, not intravenous, but intro vitro uh, fertilization and, you know, several hundred of, do several hundred of dollars or, you know, going into these uh, medical practitioners. To help women, you know, have multiple births. Well, when you do the in, intro, in, what do you call it? Vitro fertilization. There's that side effect of having more than one child at a time. You can have two to four to eight children, just depending on the process and your body makeup. So you just never know, never, never know. And as far as my knowing it, I can see two coming out, uh, but three, four, five, six at the same time, mm, that's too much manipulation and too much of a burden for one mother, one father to care for at one time. So um, let's see, we go back from my little perspective and we go to... We're going to read um, chapter 18, verses mm, 9, when the Lord is asking, uh, along with his two angels, where is your wife Sarah? They ask him. There in the tent, he replied, the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening. At the entrance to the tent, which was behind him, Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Okay, so basically, she ain't really saying that the Lord is crazy or anything like that, but she's just looking at her or uh, makeup, meaning her bill, her status in life, and considering her age, you know, how she's going to sit there and run out the, and raise a newborn child and watch him grow and all that details with, you know, being a mother. 
<laughs> but again, um, Sarah is not Abraham. And as women, sometimes we do run off the mouth and we say some stupid things at times. But it's basically charged to our hearts, not our heads, okay? We get goofy. We're emotional creatures. So you do know how that is. So getting back to scripture um, in chapter 18, verses 13. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I think not. That's my perspective. Moving back to scripture reading. I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Okay. Sarah was afraid. So she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Okay. Instead of women just telling the truth, we always think we can hide behind rocks, hide behind another false pretense of telling another story to uh, cover up the story that we had said. But we as women have to grow up. We have to learn how to tell the truth. If it humiliates us in some way or downgrade us in some way or degrade us in a certain way, we just have to accept the humility and the hope of the Lord restoring us by us repenting and us moving on and try to do better the next time. I mean, I always got to lie about stuff. It's just our feeble minds and our attempt to understand of such great power, power that, you know, we as humans, you know, do sometimes doubt uh, our spiritual guide. For me, it's the Lord of us, Yeshua, Yahweh, um, Holy Spirit. You know, I believe in all of that. It's just we lack patience as human beings. And we want to try to go do it on our own instead of falling back and let it all, you know, play out. But that's something we all have to work on, but mostly women. All right, moving back to the scripture. We got a subtitle for verse 16 in chapter 18, Abraham pleads for Sodom. Okay, when the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom. And Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and what is just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went to toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not judge, will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, and I must say, Abraham, he was, you know, he was persistent, yet barking up a tree that I didn't think he knew that could just come crashing down on his head. Because, you know, he's questioning things that he shouldn't be questioning, but using the name in the sentences he was trying to make or a plea he was trying to hope uh, the Lord will listen to his plea and his prayer that he not destroy the city because he felt it was some good people down there at least he thought anyway and the Lord just sent listening to him just sent listening to him but we're going to go to verse 26 uh, in chapter 18, the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord 
So I am nothing from dust and ashes, but dust and ashes. What if the number of righteousness is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I found 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? If he said, the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry. Because, you know, me, I would have been angry with Abraham right now. I'm like, look, you could have said if it's just one person. You know what I'm saying? Just one person. But you went starting at 50 and then you negotiating going from 50 to 45. Man. Okay. But anyway, that's just my perspective. Moving back to uh, scripture. Okay. Um, verse 30. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. Well, if only 30 can be found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold to speak to the Lord. Now, he had been bold already in that second speed of 55, 45. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on, Abraham. All right, you're testing and you're moving too close to the edge. All right. <sighs> we go to uh, verse 31. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. We're moving quickly into um, chapter 19, which is Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. So as you know from that title, it wasn't nobody up in that camp. <laughs> but it probably was a few because we did have a few people escape. But then we had this one lady that longed for looking back, as in the past and where she had came from and grew up in the town. She longed for that and all, I guess, that was good in her eyes. And, you know, she did disobey the Lord. And we know she turned into a pillar of salt. But this is all in chapter 19. We're going to start reading it. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My Lord, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. We insisted so strongly that they that they did go with him and enter his house. He prepared a meal for them, making bread without yeast, and they ate. Now, my understanding of the reason why um, Lot was sitting there at the uh, first part of the town when you walk in he probably wanted to save any innocent man or female that he possibly can and why he was sitting there in Sodom and Gomorrah knowing it had went to hell I don't know he was just doing a disservice to himself and his family members but we move on because we already know the Lord is going to destroy all right but anyway we're going to move to chapter 19 verse 4 before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom. Now, see what I'm saying? Every man. Both young and old surrounded the house. They called to Lot. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. And you're talking about a whole body of men. Like, self. Okay? We're going to even say 12, 14, 15 men. They don't found out through word of mouth, I'm sure, that two men have come, meaning I guess fresh meat for them, that they're going to sit up there and do ungodly acts to these two men. But little did they know, these two men were special men. They were godly men and endowed with a lot of firepower on getting justice done. So that was a hot mess. And, you know, I'm just why I'm saying it's not right for you to be uh what do you call it crazed in a sense where you're in one sex type of relationship like you you know with a man and a man or a woman and a woman because definitely no procreation can um be had between the two individuals but 
just like you're committing an act. And I'm not saying all the town's men came, because I don't think all of the town's men were, um, what do you call it, gay or, you know, liking the same sex. But could you imagine going to a new town and just say if you were gay and you had all these really oppressed men, angry men, you know, lustful men, uh, demonic men in a sense come and you and your partner are staying with some, you know, nice family or whatnot, or maybe their own family members. And then they come because you're new to town and they just want to come jump your bones and probably leave you all hurt in the street or whatnot. And you're trying to figure out what happened. You know what I'm saying? That is a senseless act. Same as if you, you know, called yourself entering in this, you know, of your own free will. And then something like that happened to you. I mean, same can be said with the male and the female. It's still rape. It's still uh, sodom being sodomized. And it's just a whole nother era. But just for a group of men to come, because they don't spot it. But somebody don't told them some new men have come to town. They want to take their essence from them. Now, how cruel could that be? But that's just my point of view. <sighs> okay, you can look at it however you want to look at it, but it's it's just not right. Okay, then we move on to um, verse 6 in chapter 19. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you. And you can do whatever you like with them, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. And my sidebar with the passage here, um, Lot trying to throw his virgin daughters out to this angry mob, you know, it's kind of distasteful too. And I don't think he was thinking with all his uh, mindset, because not only... Uh, that he disgraced his daughters, who probably was living right, serving the Lord right, doing everything right, and he's going to just, you know, put them up as sacrifices without even thinking. That was a no-no for him to do in my eyes with his daughters, as well as even trying to go talk to these people that he know can't be talked down for the two angels that arrived. You know, I'm like, did I not know the angels had been endowed with powerful, um, what do you call them, salvational tools or self-saving tools that the Lord armed them with. Lord, I don't want to see no harm come to no virgin women as not, you know, his angels is sitting down. He got this. And Lord just, all, I mean, lot just all up in the way, trying to do things instead of sitting back and these angels do what they already had been um prophesized to do let them do their job so things can go back to what the lord wants to see as normal demeanor and behavior among all humankind not just the male but all humankind but you know a lot doing too much in my book okay uh so we go back to scripture chapter 19 verse 9 get out of our way they replied and they said this fellow came here as an alien and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse. We will we'll, we will treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. So they not only uh, talking about they're going to do bodily and probably sexual harm to Lot and his family members. If he don't get out the way or give, him, or give them those two men. Now, how is Lot going to save himself from that? See, he's crazy. Lot, he wasn't thinking. He was not a military man. Okay, because you just don't go out there unarmed and think you're going to talk to this, a major mob out here. Over sex, depraved, decrepit, dehumanized group of men. Okay, so we're going back uh, to verse 10. In chapter 19, but the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. See what I'm saying? The angels know he's going to get mobbed, raped, stabbed, killed, whatever, because of them being there. 
But, you know, that's just a demonic thing. They already know. Satan already know what was going to happen. So he's going to try to stir up some nonsense. But it is what it is. The Lord got it on lockdown. Okay. So moving back. Uh, after they, the two angels brought Lot back into the house and shut the door. Verse 11 goes on to read. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness. So that they could not find the door. Two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, son-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. You see what I'm saying? And then they need to be destroyed. It needed to be. That's my side. Keep moving on to uh, verse 14. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his son-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. See, Lot was acting crazy. It's like he had just got stuck in one place and in some time in his mind and couldn't move. So the angels pretty much had to drag him out the city. Oh, my Lord, I tell you, he just a hot mess. But we're going to move on to uh, verse 17 in chapter 19. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plains. Free, flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my Lord, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes. And you have shown great kindness to, the, to me and spare my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I will die. Look here, it's a town, not enough to run to, and it's women. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. But flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zor. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. See, that's what we're talking about. When the Lord has delivered you out of a place in your life or a, a emotional state point in your life that you needed to get over, when you keep going back to the thing that the Lord had tried or, or really had delivered you from, and you go back longing for that, that's a no-no. That's a no, 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 no. That's just inviting more terror, more heartache for yourself. And you may not be able to get out of it. See, um, Lot's wife did the most undespicable thing, disobeyed the Lord and the angels about not looking back at the past. Because that's all the past. We already told you what's going to happen in your past or your near future past. And you still didn't believe. So longing for the past, she disobeyed the Lord, looked back. And that's where her life ended. She could just stay looking to the future and in the present. Kept moving. Don't even look about what's happening. Because you're going to hear all this crying. This outcry of loneliness. Not to be destroyed. But they were wicked. Wicked, 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 wicked people. So what was she thinking of in her mind? But anyway, that should be a lesson to everyone. If the Lord, that you pray to the Lord for certain things. Uh, to get you out of certain negative things places or away from certain people don't gun it listen to the lord do what he says don't look back it's nothing good in the past 
half the time if you're asking the Lord to remove it. Uh, if they're good memories, you'll keep those memories. And those people will be with you if they're not on the earth plane that we live on. They'll be with you forever until the mysterious things of dementia, uh, Alzheimer's come and play a cruel act on us where it takes some of those memories. But usually, hey, it is what it is. Okay, I feel the Lord let us remember what he want us to remember. And uh, that's good enough. All right, so enough said on that. If the Lord deliver you, don't look back. Keep moving forward. That's my message I got out of this um, chapter as well as verse text. Okay, uh, verse 27 in chapter 19. Early that next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, towards all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he um, brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Uh, next subtitle, Lot and his daughters. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains. For he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father's old and there is no man around here to lie with us, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then lie with him and preserve our family line through our father. Uh, basically what I feel about this text, they're forgetting to commit incest. But since the Lord had destroyed um, all the men in the family, well, not the men in the family, but the men in this particular region of the world, um, I don't know how they would, excuse me, going to uh, appropriate the world. So if anybody can help me with that, Type of understanding or maybe there's no understanding really needed god forgave that sin so the world could be or that region of the world could be replenified up you know re um redone as a way of appropriating again to establish more men and women in that region of the world okay um Go back to 33 in chapter 19. That night they got their father to drink wine and the older daughter went in and lay with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, last night I lay with my father. Let's get him drunk with wine again tonight and you can go in and lie with him so we can just preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine. That night also, and the younger daughter went and lay with him again. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. Moab, Moab. He is the father of Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him um, Benham, and he is the father the Ammonites of today. Now, uh, maybe 20 and verses thereon would tell us how the Lord dealt with Noah and his uh, daughters having sex with him. Um, and just looking at verses 20, um, 12, uh, it talks about she is really my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother. Abraham half truth was a sinful deception, not a legitimate explanation. So basically, uh, it was a hot mess. But uh, like I said, maybe we'll understand a little better as we read on through the uh, chapters. Because again, um, I guess the Lord let him be sloppy drunk um, so the daughters could lie with him because it says that he didn't know anything of them you know being on top of him however it was he wasn't awoke for that 
physically where he could tell what was going on. So he must have been sloppy, sloppy drunk. Or the Lord put him in a very, very deep sleep. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody else can help me with that understanding. But uh, I guess we will understand how my grandmother used to say, as we keep living and things go, or by and by, we will understand. If we don't understand now, we will sometime in the future. Okay. But that's all I had, you all, um, for this day's Bible lesson review, studying of the Bible. Uh, taping this at 3.07 a.m. in the wee hours of Thursday morning. Still got to go to work. <laughs> but I do it for the greater good of the world uh, and my Lord and Savior. Hoping I can reach someone and, um, <clears throat> and the Lord can use me to help reach other people. And with sharing of this video, it should enlighten someone to have a change of heart and get saved if they haven't got saved already but you all have a great night morning or afternoon whenever you're viewing this thank you for coming to my channel please subscribe tell other people about what i'm doing here on my channel and um i'll see you next time be blessed thank you